such a beautiful day to be all the way over in Norway, though it's quite far away from the country where I stay. You know, the one with kangaroos on the plane? <laughs> and where didgeridoos are played. And where the people stop to say, G'day, mate. <laughs> but if you still haven't got a clue, it's okay. Because I've got a, betty, I got a better greeting for you to say. May peace be upon you, I pray. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah. In all honesty, it's probably the best feeling to be so far away from home, literally on the other side of the world, down under, yet coming, you know, God knows how far I am today, yet I still feel like I'm so close to home. Well, Allah, the most beautiful thing Allah has blessed us, He has put love between our hearts in countries that we don't know of. So far away, Yet, wallah, we are so close to each other in our hearts. So alhamdulillah, and I ask Allah to, may, may Allah reward everyone that made this event what it is today. Because wallah, it's beautiful. Jazakallah khairan to everyone. Okay, as, the, uh, as Brother Fahad was saying, a few years ago, not many people knew who I was. I used to, you know, even when I went to the masjid, people wouldn't even give salam to me because they don't even know who I am. Even though I go to the same masjid for so long. So, alhamdulillah, I was a pretty shy guy. But about two years ago, um, I, was studying in, I was studying media at university. And I used to love media a lot. But the only thing was, the only jobs available in media are, you know, music, girls, all the haram stuff that you can think of. So there's not that many halal opportunities to, to work in media. So... In 2011, at the end of 2011, I went to Hajj, Alhamdulillah, with Sheikh Shadi. I think he's been here before. And I made a special dua to Allah at Hajj. I said, Ya Allah, you've given me all these skills in media. You've made me good at making videos. You've, get, you've made me good at making films. Please, Ya Allah, let me use the skills you have given me for good. I said, Ya Allah, please let me make videos on YouTube. <laughs> And you guys probably are laughing because you don't believe me, but it's true. I got the du'a written on my phone since Arafat. So I made that du'a in December two, in November 2011. Ya Allah, please let me make videos on YouTube for Islam. Relax. And then about two months later, I was sitting in my class at university and the teacher was speaking about the importance of contributing to society. You know, just letting the world know who you are, where you come from, what your background is, what your faith is. So I jumped onto YouTube during my lecture and I typed the words religion into the YouTube search bar. I was hoping to see at least one Islamic video on the front page. To my surprise, there was nothing on Islam after typing the word religion on the front page. But there was one video about Jesus. There was one video about Jesus by a Christian in the form of a poem which had gained over like 10 million views in one week. So I said to myself, Ya Allah, this is my chance. I'm going to respond to this video and I've never written a poem before in my whole life. But I'm going to write a poem for this and let the world know who Jesus is from an Islamic perspective. This is like two months after I made the dua. And wallahi, I've never seen anything like this happen before, but after one day of releasing the video, it got like 100,000 views. Within a month, it got a million views. And I've never seen anything like this before. But by Allah, this isn't from me. This is from the creator of us, the creator of YouTube, the creator of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all, all praise and all glory is to Him, the one who answers the dua of those who call upon Him. I ask Allah to make me sincere and, you know, benefit this. Just to get a feel of this, Who's actually watched the Jesus video? All right, a few. All right, that's, wallahi, this, this stuff is what I'm talking about. You're halfway, not halfway across the world, you're on the other side of the world, yet people, you know, we're all Muslim brothers and like, no matter how far we go, 
I don't feel far at all. I feel like I'm still at home. Allah, it's the most beautiful thing. Allah has alif bayna kulubina. He's made our hearts close. It's the most beautiful thing. Allah. Anyways, um, I'm going to perform one of my favorite poems, The Meaning of Life. Um, it's my favorite poem because it's a poem that shows how much rationale is in Islam. That Islam is not just a leap of faith religion. Islam is a real religion. It is haq, it is true. We don't call people to, you know, take a gigantic leap of faith. We call people to truth. We call people to Allah. And, you know, the signs are all around us. So, inshallah, I'll begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And many of you, you guys might have thought I was from America. I don't know why. Maybe because of my voice when I poem. But I'm not. I'm from Australia, just in case. All right. What are we doing here and where are we going to go? It's like we just woke up one morning and then it's welcome to the show. Don't ask any questions, just go with the flow. Make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke. Copy everything you see on the TVs from the hairstyles to the clothes and don't think too often, just do exactly as you're told. You ever get confused and just turn towards the alcohol? You still hear your thoughts? Then just turn up the radio as you learn to live a lifestyle of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. But in all honesty, I just really need to know, is there more to the cycle than growing and getting old? Living and dying just to leave behind a happy home and a whole lot of property that somebody else is going to own. I just really need to know before the casket's closed. Because I'm not ready to gamble with my soul, nor am I ready to take any chances. These are life's simple questions, and I'm just searching for some answers. Like, what are we doing here? And what is our purpose? How did we get here? And who made us so perfect? And what happens once we go? Or is this world all really worth it? Questions we don't answer, because apparently we don't really have to. There's no purpose to this life and our existence is merely natural. Then in that case, please let me ask you, did you create yourself or was it somebody else who had fashioned you? Because you're a being that's impeccable, faultless and unparalleled. You're a product of supreme intelligence and I'm merely being rational. For there isn't a camera on this earth that can come close to the human eye, nor a computer that can compete alongside the human mind. And if the whole world was to come together, we wouldn't be able to create a single fly. So many signs, yet we still deny as science tries to justify that all this could come from none when it's a simple sum. Zero plus zero plus zero cannot possibly ever give you one. So from where did all this order come? For everything has its origins, a maker, a creator of its own. I mean, the only reason you've probably watched this video is because somebody had to press upload. So you can believe in the Big Bang, but I'd rather believe in he who caused it to explode. Allah, the creator of the universe along with every single soul, the ever living, the master, the only one who is in control, unlike his creation beyond our imagination and no. He did not ever leave us alone. Just like every manufacturer, he left us with an instruction manual. The Quran and Islam, and I'm sorry to jump to conclusions, but it's the only one possible. The only definition of God is the supreme being, the one and only, it's logical. A book with zero contradictions and miracles that are both scientific and historical. Like the detailed description of the human embryo. The mountains as pegs hold and firm the earth below. The two seas that don't mix in a complete separate flow. The planets in orbit alternating night and day as they stay in float. The expansion of the universe and the creation of everything from H2O to the stories of the past and the preservation of Pharaoh to identifying the lowest point in the land where Persia defeated Rome. And not a word has changed, it's still the same. So please explain how all this was known over 1400 years ago.
to a man who couldn't read nor write as he would simply recite whatever the angels spoke. And if you still don't believe, please try to come up with something that's even close. But you can't. So he took God as a mockery and his messengers as a joke. Dismissed his scriptures as tales and legends of the ancient folk as we lived life according to our whims, desires and hopes, saying this life is the only home we will ever know. We will live then die then simply turn to bones. Yo, lo, correction. After the grass dies, the rain arrives and it regrows and Allah promises to do the same thing to your very soul and bring you back from your very fingertips to your toes as the all-seeing supreme being watches us so close and we are surely being tested in our wealth, our health, our self and everything that we've been blessed with. So believe for we will surely be resurrected and be brought back to our Lord and account for every single deed. As he hands us our books and orders us to read from the bad to the good and everything in between. You yourself are sufficient for your own accountability, so don't be mad at me. Your Lord says, you were the one who thought he wouldn't come back to me. I gave you a whole life long to search after me, but you were busy in all that which was temporary, so read and glad tidings to all those who believed but if you disbelieve read and don't let that day be the first day you find out what your life really means read